Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Monday night team vaccination training call. I'm grateful that everyone is here this evening. Thank you for taking the time. Hello out there, people. Hello, Nancy and Agnes and Deb and Sandra. There's my old buddy, Paul Van Veen, Joanne. Nice to see everybody. Sue Hansen's on the call here. We have an exciting call tonight talking about creating a self image and a mindset for success. So I'm just going to wait till I can see where I can find our trainer, Christine Tremblay. Do, do, do on here. Do, do, do. Let me see here. Hang on. I don't see her on here. Give me one second here. Hello. Hi, Christine. Yes. There you are. There you are. Let me see where I can see you here. How come I can't see you in the feed here? Are you I, on, are you on I a don't, tablet? I am on my laptop. You're on your laptop. Okay, just give me a sec here. We can find you here. Do, do, do. I'm looking for the only person that should be unmuted. There you are. I got you. Finally. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna make you co-host right now. Awesome, sounds good. Well, we're excited to uh, to have you on the call tonight, and um, it's um, it's uh, it, I want to introduce Christine here because, to be quite honest, Christine and I have never met. Um, she is on Carla Archer's team, and um, she um, uh, reached out to Carla, I'm assuming, and said, "Hey, you know what? I think I got a great topic that might help the field." And Carla reached out to me and said, "Hey, I've got a wonderful, wonderful lady that um, would love to do some training on our call." And I'm like, "Oh, please do! Step up, step up!" And it's it's uh, it's funny because Christine is a, is a mother of two. Um, she um, is an entrepreneur. She loves to ride horses. She um, in fact, it's funny because we just talked and she's traveling through California right now in her motorhome. So she's doing this call via her motorhome as she travels across the, co the country. And they just happen to have a little uh, motorhome problem that they had to get fixed today that we discussed today. So I can't tell you how appreciative we are, Christine, to have you on the call and, um, you know, to um, uh, share with the field some of your thoughts about uh, mindset for success, which is always, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a great topic because we sometimes, you know, um, we all get to the point sometimes where we don't necessarily think we're capable or we're good enough or um, our mindset sort of bogs us down. And, and it's so great to be edified by other people that are just normal people like you and I that can really get, you know, uh, into this and realize that we do have the capabilities to be able to do a great job. So without further ado, it's my great pleasure to introduce Christine Tremblay as our trainer on Team Vaccination's call for Monday, March 2nd. Welcome, Christine. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, yes, yeah, so as Terry was saying, um, we are traveling right now from, uh, from to uh, Yuma, and I've talked my husband into, you know, a month or so away from the farm. And so I'm quite excited about that. And as we're traveling through um, California, uh, through the Redwoods, we had a little bit of motorhome trouble. So I'm uh, hot spotting off of my phone and doing this tonight. But um, I'm really excited to be with you guys. Um, I and this is kind of just a presentation that I like it. It's uh, it's one that I've done a few times with um, um, some of my clients and um, 
sit back, enjoy it. You're not going to hear anything new that you. Um, everybody, you know, Terry and Paul and Carla and Jay and Kathy, you know, they're all great speakers and, you know, they all tell us great information, but I just want to have a little bit of a twist on it. Um, maybe just show you kind of how I like to present, you know, a little bit of fun, a little bit of hype and, and you know, enjoy the show. Okay. Are you seeing my screen, Terry? Yes, we are. Yeah. I think there's um there's a little bit of a delay on your hotspot on your phone, so okay. um uh, I don't know whether it'll help if um if you just talk a little slower it might catch up with the voice a bit because we're getting a couple blank spots as you talk but it may be just a connection on your hotspot. Okay. Oops. Ah. Is the PowerPoint not changing for you? Can you see the video right now? No, I can only see the first slide, which is the welcome slide. Okay. There, I can see the video now. Okay. But I, we can't hear the video. You still can't hear the video? No. Okay. <laughs> Technology is great when it works, isn't it? Okay. Well, that's, you know what? That's all right. You know what? The biggest thing about this video, I'm going to shut that down and go back to my slides here, is just that I don't know if you've ever seen The Greatest Showman um, movie, but it, like the song really just says, you know what, y you need to be you, you need to be who you were meant to be. That's really what it is. Step out, step out from behind that stand and be who you need to be. So, you know what, I want to know if you guys like, I'm hoping that you're ready to quit playing small. You know what, play as you want to play. Um, so. What we're going to talk about is uh, goals, and I'm sure that's nothing new that you've heard about before. Um, but did you know, really, and I know, like I say, we've talked about goals before. What are your goals this month? Uh, you know, are you hitting your target? Did you set a goal for 2020? But really, only 7% of people. We're not on the slides right now, Christine. Just so you know, oh. it's on your uh, it's on your Facebook page, I think. Okay, let me go back here again. I love this tech. It's fun. Zoom can be <laughs> a very exciting tool when it works. <laughs> okay, Terry, let me let me try again here. Okay, you're back to me. Back you're to back you. to see, just to seeing me. Yeah. Okay, let me see. I'll just make sure that I can. I'll shut everything here and I'll try again. Maybe this will help. Okay, go back here. How are we doing now? There we go. Now okay. Go. I had too many things open maybe for my uh, hotspot. Okay. So now we're at the 7% screen. Okay. Perfect. So you guys, really only 7% of people hit their goals. But, you, you know, like I know all of us, we have dreams. Uh, and I don't think most of you when you signed up said, you know what, I'll do this 
And if it works out, okay, but if not, no biggie. I know, you know, in your heart that you wanted something. And, you know, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're talking about how you can get to be a group that does reach their goals. And I know you're probably thinking right now, yeah, yeah, Christine, I don't know you. Um, I've never heard of you before. Um, what do you know about getting into that 7% group? I'm sure that's probably what you guys are thinking. Um, but what I'm here to tell you is that I've where a lot of you are right now. And if I could create goals for this year, um, I created goals unlike I have other years because a lot of years I would, you know, I, I, in January I'd set my goal and then September would roll around and I'd think, hmm, well, maybe this isn't the year. And then, you know, November would come around and, ooh, I still hadn't reached where I got what I wanted to be. And, and I think, no, I, I don't think this is going to be the year. And then I get to December and I think, oh, year, you know, so let's try that again. Next year comes around and then this year is going to be the year. And I know you guys have all done that, right? And I know you really mean it that this year is going to be the year. So that's where we're going to talk about now. Um, but first, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about me. Uh, Terry told you a little bit. Um, I'm a, a wife. I have a wonderful husband, Jeff. We've been married for 24 years. Uh, we have two grown children. I've worked as a registered nurse for 26 years. And you know what? I still love it. Uh, my husband and I, we run a mixed grain and cattle farm uh, in rural Saskatchewan. And I thought, you know what? We're at a really pretty good place, I think. And then my youngest daughter left home. Went away, moved to the city, went to university, and I fell into a real slump. And you know what, I had mocked people that had said, oh, you know, you're gonna get into empty nest and you're gonna have a midlife crisis. And oh my word, I didn't have a social circle anymore. I had no 4-H, I had no hockey, no volleyball, no basketball, no parent meetings. And you're thinking, yeah, what? Well, isn't that what you wanted? Yes, I was supposed to be happy, right? I got what I wanted. My kids had developed wings. They flew away. But you know what? I no longer had a goal. For 19 years, I had wanted to be the best mom I could be every day. That was my goal. Fit. So really thank goodness for my husband. And I had a few friends in similar situation as I. And so we started riding horses together. And these were horses that they, so since the kids were gone. And I started to study and study about how your mind works. And I read a lot and I Googled a lot. And I went to conferences and I really immersed myself in this information on how your habits and your behaviors and your beliefs can create happiness. Um, so, you know, all this time I'd been telling my kids, um, you can, you know, you can be anything you want to be. You can create anything you want, but we often forget that for ourselves, you guys. And so one of the greatest gifts, you know, we can give our family is your own happiness. And, you know, I know there's lots out, out there nowadays about self-help and happiness. And I'm really grateful that you tuned in tonight. Uh, you know, I know you're taken away from your family, but it's really important to educate yourself uh, because 
I want you to understand that you are giving them a gift tonight. You are giving them a gift to share what's available. Um, and so during this vision and this journey that I was on, it was a time that I was introduced to Vox Life uh, by Carla Archer. I had uh, plantar fasciitis and working as a registered nurse, uh, plantar fasciitis does not go well with uh, standing on your feet for 12 hours a day. So she said, you know, why don't you try these socks? And I was like, Carla, a pair of socks, like really? Anyways, you guys all know the story. I fell in love with the technology. I joined, you know, basically just so that I could buy, buy the product at wholesale. And little did I know that I would want to create a team and, you know, I would sell enough really to create this dream that my husband and I had. We wanted to be able to travel and, um, you know, now we're doing it. We made the decision. I joined Fox Life and made the decision. I wanted to put that money that I was making towards travel. And uh, so, yeah, you know, here we are. This made this made this made the decision and we're traveling from Saskatchewan down to Yuma for the winter. Um, now, and I'm not telling you that to impress you by any means, because I'm just like the rest of you out there. Um, I just want to let you know that if I can do this, you can do it too. You just have to decide, make the decision and, you know, get out there. And so, now, in some form or another, we've all started uh, this business because we wanted something different in our lives, right? Maybe you wanted to help others get the benefit uh, you received from the technology like I did. Or travel. And for kind of a nightmare because the reality sometimes are that sales are low or um, inconsistent, or maybe you're struggling um, because when you're with your children, you feel like you should be working on your business. And then when you're working, you feel like you should be with your children, spending more time with them. So I'm sure this you know, relates to some of you, you can resonate with some of it. Um, and so I think what most of us want is really um, more control. So for me, what changed is I started working with a mentor. Um, is my voice keeping up with the slides now, Terry? There's a picture of uh, Jay and Carl and a bunch of us on there. Yep, we're all good. Okay, cool, cool. Thanks. So uh, the first picture is um, part of Carl Archer's team. We were at a attending the conference in Niagara Falls last June, and we wanted to you know, have a picture with Jay. And then also this is the next picture is uh, me with my mentor, Bob Proctor. And so when you start working with a mentor and you start attending these conferences, you guys, it's like, it's like time collapses, really. Like you're so immersed with the information and you just are part of a mastermind with other people, you know, and others see things in you that you don't see in yourself. Like, it's really incredible. So the next thing I want to talk about is trading your time for money. So I, I'm guessing a lot of you still are like me. You um, are trading your time for money. So I work as a registered nurse. And um, the Saskatchewan Health Authority pays me to do it. I trade my time for money. And... Uh, when I was thinking that I wanted to have more time to travel, I thought, huh, so I scale and maybe make more money to do that. Oh, but then, you know, when am I going to travel for less money? And this was when I really had to think that way of thinking was trading, you know, time for money. Um, so, you know what, this is what I want you to think about. Just, you know, just be with me tonight and just think. What if you could two times your revenue? Go ahead, you know, maybe jot that down as a side note for yourself. What if you could two times your revenue? What if you could three times your revenue? 
Or you know what, really stretch yourself. What if you could four times your revenue, you guys? Like what would that look like for you? What would it feel like? Because here's the truth. Um, it really matters who you're learning from. It matters who you're surrounding yourself with uh, because you know the workforce is changing. Industry's changing. Just how much, think how much time, uh, how much industry's changed. Or, you know, if we're going to go five years, let's think about maybe how much has changed in your lifetime, you guys. Like, economy's changing, lifestyle's changing, how we're doing business is changing. Um, like, you know, look at how I'm working tonight. You know, I'm hot spotting off this cell phone, and, you know, you guys can. This is pretty cool how we can interact with our customers like this. And yeah, maybe there's a little few glitches with the technology and, but, but it works. You can see face to face. I can, uh, you know, I can contact customers and, you know, they can show me, you know, what sock it is that they want or, you know, whatever the conversation that is that you want to have with them. Maybe it's just meeting people. Um, so we just really have to have a mindset for change, I guess. Um, and that's what we want to talk about. Um, and why learning is so important and what you're absorbing is so important. Um, a lot of times when I work with clients, you know, I don't teach. I think what we talk about mostly is how to think you guys. So my question is for you, you know, do you have the courage to change how you're thinking? I'm serious because so many people are worried about what everyone else is thinking and it really, it doesn't matter what everyone else is thinking. What matters is what you guys are thinking and what you think. About. Because you know what, some people around you, they're not going to like what you're thinking when you're thinking, Oh, I could, you know, double my income or I could triple my income. They are going to think, you know, uh, wait a minute. Um, are you sure you want to be thinking that way? So what we're going to talk about, setting yourself up for success, making sure you're setting the right goal, understanding the part of your mind that's holding you back from reaching your goal, and the key habits that will guarantee you hit your goal. So how I've learned about goals is there's three types of goals that I've learned about. Um, first of all, you know, all these runners here, they probably have a goal and they're probably not the same goal. They're all at the same starting line. Just like us with Fox, we all started in the same place, but maybe we didn't all have the same goal. People, uh, so if you have an A type goal, there's three different kinds of goals. An A type goal is something that you already know how to do. A B type goal is something that you think you can do. But you know what? I'm not interested in telling you about any of those. I'm not even interested in, you know, messing around with those. Tonight, what we're going to talk about is uh, finding a C type goal for yourself. Now, the C-type goal is something that you don't know how to do. Now, you're probably thinking, ah, why are you telling me about C-type goals? Why would I want to think about a goal if I don't even know how to do it? That's ridiculous, Christine. And then that little uh, guy on your shoulder, maybe I call him a little gremlin. Sometimes he sits on my shoulder and he might say, a C-type goal, that's irresponsible. That's illogical. That doesn't make any sense. Why would I go after something that I do not know how to do it? That must be the wrong goal. But actually, you guys, Most of those people, you know how I said 7% of people reach their goal and 93% of people don't reach their goals? And it's probably those 93% don't reach their goals because they have the wrong goal. They're staying here with those A type and B type goals. Like I'm sure you guys have heard of SMART goals. 
kids at school, they're all talking about set these SMART goals, but really they're kind of dumb. There's no inspiration to a SMART goal. What I want you to do is go for that C type goal. You don't know how you're going to get it. Write it down. And, you know, you might think, like I say, it's crazy. Um, but just go ahead, you know, write that big goal down, whatever it is. Like I say, for me, it was to travel. That's what I really wanted to do. Set that. I didn't know how I was going to do that. How would I get enough time off work? How would I, you know, be able to afford that? But you know what? It wasn't until I made the decision to do it. And that's how all the steps fell into place. We had to find someone to do chores at home. You know, it just the list went on and on and on. But you really have to think, what do you really want, you guys? Now, and I'm not talking, you know, what someone else wants for you or um, maybe what your kids wants for you or your husband wants for you. I'm talking about what do you want? What do you personally and professionally want? And when I work with clients, this is always where I start. And it's absolutely the hardest part. I know it was for me for sure. Why that is? Because most people have denied what they want. They've pushed it down. They've cut themselves off. And lots of times you were grown up, when you were growing up, you know, you uh, maybe it's bad to want or you shouldn't want. You know what? Just be happy with what you, where you are, what you have. I'm sure some of you have been told that before. Those ideas, and I'm not saying, you know, that those people are bad and they weren't telling you that because they didn't want you to be happy. You know, they were just wanting you to, um, to, to be safe and to keep you secure. But if you have a right goal right now, you know, what's, what is it that you really want? If anything were possible, if I were to wave a magic wand and I could say, you could have anything you want, you know, write that down. What would it be? I'm talking, you know, shoot for the stars, whether it's money, whether it's travel, whatever it is, write that down and let that be your goal, you guys. Now, part of what's Oh, that little gremlin, like I said, that was sitting on your shoulder. But think of this. I know lots of us are over 40. And uh, we all know about phones that were attached to the wall. I know you guys remember that. And at the same time, when the, the wall, this is some of the reading that I've been doing and studying. At that same point in time, we didn't have cell phones. The phone was attached to the wall. At that same point in time, John Kennedy said, what would it take to send someone to the moon? And the answer that he got back was the will to do it. Now, remember at this time, you guys, there was no cell phones. There was no, uh, we were talking, the phone was attached to the wall. We were using the yellow pages. And at that point in time, he still said that was the only answer he got, the will to do it. Uh, and, the, you know, Werner von Braun didn't say, you know, well, we'll have to check with the astronauts or we'll have to check with the engineer or I don't know if we have the right engine to be able to get us to the moon or all he said was. And I know, like, you're probably thinking, like, where? Where are you going with this story, right? But I want to ask you to ask yourself again, you know, is that goal?
guys could have a few more. When you start looking at that, you know, I don't know what was your goal. Like I say, I wanted a motor home. I wanted to travel. And then one of the limiting thoughts that came up for me was, who am I? That's going to be really hard. I've got, you know, animals to feed. What are others going to think? What if I fail? What if I tell people I'm going to do that? And then, I, you know, it doesn't happen. And you know what? Biggest one of all, I don't want to be greedy. Like, isn't that crazy how all these little, you know, things that come up in our mind? But what I want you guys to do is just put an come up, cancel them out. And I'm sure, you know, you guys probably have a few more you could add to that list, but cancel them all out. Because what I want you to ask yourself, you know, is this belief really true? Um, what if I just change these ideas? You know, what if it wasn't hard? What if I just, you know, found someone to do the chores? What if, you know, I think that if I keep selling and I keep maybe not even just worried, worrying about selling, just worry about having conversations with people and telling them the success that I've had with my plantar fasciitis. That has been the biggest seller, you guys, for me. Conversations and telling people the story. That has been totally the biggest, uh, biggest turnaround. Um, and challenge those thoughts that you're having. Or maybe even you're calling yourself, um, like you're calling yourself, you know, I'm a hot mess. I, I would never, that was, you know, something that, you know, my friends and I would say, oh, we're, but you know what, we need to, to clear out that trash too. And that helped us gain some mental clarity. Um, because when you gain that mental clarity, um, that's when you're able to, you know, you're going to be able to be present with your family. Just like I say, by changing those words, you know what? I am able to do this. I'm strong. I'm confident. I'm sure of myself. That's when you're going to gain these other. <clears throat> so what we want to talk about tonight, like I say, not going to know how you worry about that and challenging And thinking about what's holding you back from reaching your goals. One of the things that really holds us back too is lots of times we just run on autopilot. So how many of you in automatically reach for your morning? First thing you do, you reach for your phone. What if your spouse, your husband, your wife, what if they moved your phone? Or heaven forbid, what if you forgot your phone in the kitchen? First thing you would still do in the morning is reach for that phone. Because you're running on autopilot. And one of these things, and you know, this is something funny too. I got a car recently and it a push button to start it and how many times I still get into it you guys and I and I try to put the key in the ignition and there's no key and there's no ignition I got to remember to push that but that's I'm it's part of what we what you know what I've been taught to is a paradigm something a mental habit that you do over and over and over again and it's it's really a lens of how you see the world it's just it's something that's in your subconscious mind and uh, just, it's a series of, of beliefs and ideas and it's really, it's how we work in the world. And it, it's just one of the ways that, um, like I say, that our mind works. And 
the crazy thing is, if I were to say to you, um, think about your fridge, you guys. Um, what first comes up? The first thing that comes up in your mind is There we go. I'm a, I'm ahead of, ahead of myself here. When I think when I ask you to think about your fridge, the first thing that comes up in your into your kitchen, you see in your mind what your kitchen looks like and you see what your fridge looks like. And it's just some cells of recognition that are that are, you know, and um, the reason we do this is because we think in pictures. And oh, everybody's back from their walk. That's okay. No worries. A different way to think about um, how your mind works is this little stick person. And, and it's something that I've learned to it's just a, a big circle. The big circle is your mind and you have two parts to your mind, your conscious and your subconscious mind. And the reason that the, 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 for your mind is because it's really what controls you. It's what controls you and what controls your body. And I don't want you to get too, um, too, too worried about this picture, but it's just kind of so that it, it for me, it really set up how how your mind thinks and and why sometimes we have problems getting that C type goal into our subconscious. Because like I told you, your subconscious is uh, it, it's that it's that part where it just automatically it reaches for things. And then, you know, when, when you're, um, and when you're, you know, getting these things into your subconscious mind, that's when you can cause your body to act and, and, you know, propel yourself to these actions. So like I say, that's just how that, um, is coming up for me. So your thoughts and your feelings and your actions are all part of your, you know, your, your mind and they cause your body to go out into an action. So you may have thought, another way, I guess another way I thought about this too is um, your subconscious mind is in control and your subconscious is like, uh, um, an elephant your conscious mind is like an ant and your subconscious mind is like an elephant so who do you think really would have control like your el the elephant is going to have control over that ant right it could just step on it and squash it so you have to um that subconscious mind um, you know get get a get a better way of thinking and and really have that elephant be on your side your income to increase you need to feel and act you know from from that higher you're not going to get to that higher income from where you are right now um and i know that you know most people are gonna just bail at the first bump in the road um they're gonna you know stay and then that elephant's gonna stomp on that ant and say, oh, I can't do that. I can't reach that, you know, those goals maybe that Terry and Paul and Kathy and Carla have reached to, but you need to learn to, you know, control those, um, take control of that and, and help your subconscious mind say, yeah, I can do that too. Um, you have to keep going. Uh, this is a very interesting book and it talks about all these thoughts that I've been uh, talking about tonight. Psycho cybernetics. It's by Maxwell Maltz. And what he talks about in the, you all have a thermostat in your house. Uh, cold air comes in. 
automatically the furnace turns on and heats your house temperature where that cybernetic me mechanism or your thermostat heat is you have wherever you have it set at and you guys have the same idea too in your in your mind with whoopsie goals too your financial goals they have a cybernetic mechanism to them too um and you may think you know lots of times at the start of the year oh i'm gonna uh get to this point in my business and you know maybe by january or february maybe already by now you've got to that point you've got to where uh you wanted to sell you know a hundred thousand dollars and you've already got there then you're going to take your foot off the coast the rest of the year because most of the time that thermostat that financial thermostat that you have set it's hit it's hit that point it's it's the it's set hit the set point and you're going to coast for the rest of the year and you're just going to keep you know you're making the same money that you have year after year after year so that's where we need to tweak that thinking we need to change that thermostat that we have turn it up a little bit that paradigm override that set what you have going on there change that paradigm get it spiked up a little bit now to get to my And you know, one of the things that I was thinking about today too, when I was getting um, thinking about how I was going to set up this, was was thinking about Wi-Fi. Like, so Wi-Fi is out there all the time. I can use my phone. I can send out a Wi-Fi signal. But everybody's not able to attach to it. Like, or maybe even say you go to McDonald's and they have Wi-Fi there you have to actually attach yourself to the wi-fi you have to accept do the login accept in order to get onto that wi-fi and so it's the same kind of thing when you set your goal when you set your goal say i want to make you know whatever it is eight hundred thousand dollars a year um you need to set yourself onto that same wi-fi signal you need to Look at the people that maybe are making that kind of money a year. Whatever, wherever your goal is, I want to, you know, be able to teach and instruct and, and I want to know this, this business inside and out, just like Jay does, or just like Terry does, or just like Paul does. You need to get on that same, you need to get on that Wi-Fi signal that they're on. And you know what, you guys, it's all there. It's in the back office. All, you know, the signals are all there, the training's there, um, the information is all there. You just need to get onto it. You need to, you know, are saying to do. And it's all accessible to you. Set your goal, get the training, come what? to the conference. Really, when you come there, like I say, you get in the same vibration with other people. Um that was kind of a lot of learning for tonight. I don't know if maybe I've kind of talked a little bit about, like say, what your paradigm is, get on the same frequency, think, goal, think of how you're going to be doing when I get to that goal. Thinking was, you know what? I'm going to be able to travel I'm going to be able to, you know, come in this motor home and see Yuma or see California or put that goal in your sight. What's it going to feel like when you're doing that? Are you going to get in that vibration, get in that thought process. And that's how you're going to, you know, get to that goal. Um,
that's about it. Don't stay in the comfort zone, you guys. Um, and I kind of talked about the key must have habits. Like I say, follow these people, get into that back office. Um, it's, it's all there for you to grow and see and do. So thanks so much for having me on tonight. I hope, you know, that kind of, it's just like I say, a little bit of a different way of thinking. Um, don't stay stuck in your comfort zone. Get out there. Try different things out. Talk with different people. I think one of the, the biggest things that resonated with me tonight, Christine, is, is making, that, making the decision of what you want. And I think sometimes we, it reminds me of, you know, like a, a milkweed when they, when it, you know, something blows off a milkweed and it's like, I really don't know where I'm going. I'm just sort of drifting around in the air and I'm just like the other, all the, all the other pieces of milkweed. Um, and then you forget about the stem that stood firm, you know, no matter what the wind was, they stood firm and they didn't blow away. And, you know, for a lot of people, this is, this is really, really good because I really believe that a lot of people really haven't made the decision of what they want out of this yet. And I think that making the decision is the biggest step by far and then write it down. It doesn't mean that what you decided and what you achieved can't change and can't get bigger and can't get better, but make a decision as to where you want to go with this and what you want out of it. Um, and then go after it. And then once you get there, don't stop. Don't let your foot off the gas. Like, go for it. Like, what's next? You know? How can yeah, I how, how can I turbocharge my decision? You know, how can I frequency up? Who uh, you know, who's my tribe that I can rub elbows with that, you know, will get here? And you know, these trainings are absolutely mind blowing. And so thank you so much on behalf of the field and especially for me that um you know, that decision and, and my decision now was not where it was when I first started, but I decided I needed to go and I needed to make money. And I, I believe that I had a product in Vox Life that was absolutely incredible because my demographic was everyone on the planet. And, you know, unlike, you know, protein companies or whatever, I didn't have to look for people that were just looking to lose weight. Um, you know, I didn't look, have to look for people that were looking at putting on muscle. Um, if it was makeup, I didn't have to look for just women necessarily. Um, but, uh, the point was, is I made a decision and got to that position. I'm like, wow, this has got so much more. So I decided, and I think that one of the things that we all can be faulted at is that we don't think big enough, you know, we play too small. And um, when you think about really all the people in the world that can use our technology, man, one of the things that resonated that you said is think big, you know, don't play too small. Like when you said four times or four X your income, like it's there, it's there for all of us um, to go. So make that decision and uh, go for it. The training was spectacular. Thank you so much. And I think that, um, you know, being able to, travel and do what you like and you know this is a financial success story um that you've achieved and you you you've done and so i think it's incredible and we need to see see more and hear more of those you know financial windfalls from teams and people that have you know made a car payment or you know been able to uh, put a child um uh, you know pay for tuition or whatever it happens to be those are those are really important things too as we've talked about before because they're part of our four pillars. And um, we've, you know, talked about, we love to do it. We talk about, you know, we have something the world needs. We talk about, um, you know, uh, we love what we do and we're committed to self-improvement. But we need to talk about these financial windfalls for you saying tonight, thank you and bless you for saying, hey, I made a decision. We wanted a motor home, we wanted to travel. And I didn't even know that coming on the call. So it's exciting for me to know that you were, you know, you're there going through Yuma. Um, it was a great movie, by the way. I think it was called uh, Two Nights to Yuma or Three Nights to Yuma. Uh, <laughs> there's a movie I watched called that. So um, anyways, uh, great training. Thank you so much. Um, really, really good. So I'm going to just go through the chat here and make sure we don't have any questions. Um, everybody on the call, um, I will have this 
recording up in the units tab uh, in the team Facebook group um, within an hour or so. So uh, I wanted to thank everybody for getting on the call. And I'm just going to stop the screen. If you could just stop the screen sharing. Oh, yes, I will. And then, because you're co host, and then I'll do the gallery view. And then I want to unmute everybody so we can all pass on our thanks to you and say good night and, and thank you so much for being on the call. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, thank you, Christine. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Christine and Terry. Thanks, Terry. Good night, everybody. Great training. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, everybody.